And these are the Monday stories, the headlines you may have missed from last week from Frico Talks the News for Monday, hence the title Monday, May 18th, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com. And we're going to, this is the top story from last week that we didn't get to, but it's here. Don't waste that heat. Recycle it into power. Heat waste doping. Heat waste recycled. I don't know why I'm reading the tags. Because they're not supposed to be there. They're not supposed to have the tags up there, sir. Inappropriate. I apologize. My mother apologizes to it. Everybody apologizes that knows me for this. They all know the shame that I bear. Here's an excerpt from SciTechDaily.com. Researchers have found a new way to convert waste heat into electricity to power small devices. A thin iron-based generator uses waste heat to provide small amounts of power. Researchers have found a way to convert heat energy into electricity with a non-toxic material. The material is mostly iron, which is extremely cheap given its relative abundance. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. I don't know why I'm adding these things. I'm just trying to break it up and make it fun, you know? Make it make it digestible. Give you little sugar pills that you keep taste taking and then in between the, the, the heavy you get a little sugar pill. This is a sugar pill. You're welcome. A generator based on this material could power small devices such as remote sensors or wearable devices. <laughs> Y'all see where I'm going with this now if y'all follow this show regularly and shame on you if you don't. You know where I'm going with this. I'm going to get to that. This material can be thin so it could be shaped into various forms. Elliptical, elliptical, elliptical. I don't know why I said that. This is one of them sugar pills, by the way. These little distractions are good. They help you. I'm helping. I'm helping. I need a Ralph Wiggum's thing. I'm helping. So far, all of the st study on thermoelectric generation. Thermoelectric generation. Thermoelectric generation. So far, all the study on thermoelectric generation has focused on the established but limited Seebeck effect. I don't know what that is. I'm going to going to confess. But apparently this is uh Nakajusi, not Nakatsuji. You know what? Nakatsuji? Hold on. I just think it should be Nakajusi. Let's just see. Let's do an experiment. And I think that this is I think it's warranted. I think that what we could do is we could show both versions. We're going to have the na naka Nakasuji, and then we're just going to... We're going to... Okay, we're going to switch them around. Okay. And then we're going to... We're going to take them. We're going to... We're gonna cover everything. We're gonna let's just do this. We gotta do this. This is important. Because everybody needs to see what I'm talking about. Once you do, then you realize I am right. <clears throat> Alright, ready? Boom. We have Nakatsuji or Nakajusi. I'm sorry, Nakajutsi wins every time. I don't know who Nakatsuji is, but you need to, to consider consider changing your name now because i could only do this live in large and this is how it has to be you're done already that little uh <clears throat> text thingy didn't didn't survive long but it was important it was important and uh nakasuji continues although i prefer nakajusi but you know i don't i don't begrudge a human their name and how they want it to be so nakatsuji it is in contrast, we focused on a relatively less familiar phenomenon called the anomalous Nernst effect. Also, no idea. The anomalous Nernst effect produces a voltage perpendicular to the direction of a 
temperature gradient across the surface of a suitable material. Let's try to break that down. So we got a voltage. Okay, so this this anomalous Nernst effect. Okay, there's a voltage. Bzz, 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 bzz. Now it's perpendicular. It's perpendicular to what? To Okay, to the so really we have to think about the first off it's the temperature gradient across the surface of a uh <coughs> su suitable material that's the uh, uh, the ultimate object is the temperature gradient across the surface of a suitable material now i don't know what they define as suitable or the context and i'm sure it's in the article if you read the whole article but then we got uh, what? What condition are we look? Or where, where? 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 How is it related? A voltage perpendicular to what? To the direction, direction of what? A temperature gradient across the surface of a suitable material. And you got to keep that together. Although, <coughs> ultimately, it's the direction of a temperature gradient. Temperature gradient. What? Okay. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that these little things are helping you as much as me try to understand these parts that are scientific using they're using basically principles phraseologies whatever that I'm not privy to because I don't I, I didn't I didn't I didn't do the sciences the phenomenon could help simplify the design of thermoelectric generators okay okay now I'm interested now, see, this is why we talk about these things. Even if we don't understand the science, we talk about these things. And enhance their conversion efficiency if the right materials become more readily. Okay, so I don't know why I said that. So that's not such a grand. And enhance their conversion efficiency. And enhance. And enhance. Okay, so all remember, all of this is to get to this point. That we are not going to waste heat. We're going to convert heat. Waste heat into energy so thermoelectric generators one of their principal drawbacks is the amount of heat waste that they produce and how it has also environmental impacts and all that so this would significantly reduce that it would reduce it it would also make it more efficient because it would be actually be uh, there would be now what I don't understand, and it doesn't really say this in this article. The one big caveat being this, because they don't claim, they don't give percentages. That's always a warning flag. Even the way that they, 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 so the phenomenon could help simplify. Now it is in the lab stages, so it is fair to say that. So I won't draw too much out of that, but enhance. This is what they say. They say enhance, enhance. This is the fundamental driver behind this. The fundamental investment dollars I am willing to bet is coming from these, these green morality type uh, investment projects. They're they're asking investors to become moral in how they invest, which is horrible, horrible idea. But I'll I'll tell you why. And it's basically because the the 80 plus percent of the 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 type of of influence that comes from that sphere the market influence over the allowable morality of societies will come from less than one point you know point one percent of society they will be the fundamental drivers of the moral constructs that humans are. So it's a terrible, terrible idea. And I got more to say about this. But uh, be that as it may, this is what I suspect. However, I'm still not saying that this isn't ultimately a good thing. That the, My suspicion, though, is right now, this is probably a technology that in terms of the amount of energy that it takes to convert the waste energy to energy, it might be... Who knows how much actual efficiency it is. I'm not sure. But uh, it doesn't mean that whatever process they have, they can't actually eventually turn it into something efficient. So in this case, even if this is a morality loan or a morality investment, I think this morality investment could still end up 
undermining the very people that are investing because most of these people that are investing at these high levels with this morality investing believe you me they are investing in their future not ours they want to protect themselves against whatever might come uh, because every single one of them every citadelian knows that the fundamental reason why the world is so grinded down to dust is because of them it's because their lifestyles their ways their 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 pursuits of the apex existential in the here and now that compels them to become the gods and goddesses of the universe right here over all of our lives the they're to blame fundamentally they are to blame for uh the bulk of the misery that you see before you except for the for the huge huge caveat being that they are not to blame they are the fruit of the overwhelming aggregate decision of the pores to allow for a space for psychos to rule over us so long as they're our psychos because ultimately we hope someday that we might win the lottery and have our turn at psycho we can use our power to dictate to hundreds of millions of human beings how we imagine they should live their lives this is the game that we've been playing for thousands of years and it's murdered millions and raped pillaged and plundered men women and children alike and yet let's let's keep trying it because deep down we all want our turn being the masters that's essentially <clears throat> what 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 fuels them to do these types of loans but or investments but in this case i think this is a technology that especially the 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 most essential part i think of this is the fact that it allows them to use a much cheaper material to try to get the same results that uh, 75 percent iron and 25 percent aluminum so that it it will we saw a 20-fold jump in voltage compared to undoped samples which was exciting to see and they call it doping they call it uh, what do they call it where is it at here researchers the abundant uh, material is mostly iron right which is extremely cheap so for all the study on thermonuclear thermoelectric gen thermoelectric generation uh whatever the sea back effect is okay i can't find it never mind anyway we're going to go on to the next story of the people how the government debt protection makes us all government agencies of course yeah course yeah and also the way that they're rescuing us right now this is from advisorsperspectives.com we are all government sponsored enterprises now guggenheim investments commentaries this is very is this is this is a pretty meaty article i definitely highly suggest you read this whole article i've, I've taken out some some essential parts to the point that i want to make the support on offer to corporate America during this period of economic shutdown risks the creation of a new moral obligation for the U.S. government to keep markets functioning and help companies access credit. This means that corporate borrowers are most likely on the way to becoming something akin to government-sponsored enterprises. I'm not doing it. You're not tricking me. Like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The difference is that, in this cycle, it is not a specific institution that is too big to fail. It is the investment-grade bond market that is too big to fail. They've, so they've shifted the obligation, the, the, the thing that you're propping up. If the, if the banking industry fails, the bond market fails. And if the bond market fails, then the government can't have that. That's even closer to the heart of the power. Before the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac operated with the implied backing of the U.S. government and the senior securities they issued, mortgage-backed securities and agency debit dip, dip, debentures. <laughs> debentures were referred to as moral obligations of the U.S. government. There was no legal requirement for the U.S. Treasury to pay off or guarantee their senior securities, but during the extreme conditions of the financial crisis, when liquidity 
dried up for the agency securities and their capital position deteriorated, the Treasury stepped in. The Fed played its part with the first de facto quantitative easing program taking the form of outright purchases of agency discount notes. And ultimately, the U.S. Treasury offered its unconditional guarantees on agency mortgages and uh, debentures. I don't know what debentures are. We should probably test that out. Let's go to debentures. Debenture. 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 If you hear someone saying that to you, you think that's a good thing, right? Debenture. Well, thank you. Debenture. Well, well, thank you. You too. You too. Debenture. An unsecured loan certificate issued by a company backed by general credit rather than by specific... Oh, wow. That is like flimsalama. There is some flimsalamas to this. I think this is the uh, underlying point here, kids. If I'm so unconditional guarantee on agency mortgages and flimsalamas, we're gonna mm -hmm. hold on. That was unprofessional. I apologize. Hit the wrong thing. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is very, very important. Okay, just bear with me. All right. Ah, uh, this is important. This is probably the most decent thing that I have ever done in my life, and I'm very interested in making sure that I share it with you. For you. We're going to... Oh, no. Oh, we're moving the wrong thing. Don't do that. Don't. Don't. Come on. Get around there. Get the flimsy llamas. Get the flimsy llamas in place. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do this here. And there we go. All right. Debentures. Flimsy llamas as in, I can't believe we sold our futures for flimsy llamas what we're talking about just to get that in which ended in conservatorship that's where the u.s government kind of like kind of has some ownership kind of powers some some some, some shareholder powers i'll say i believe I, I believe comment down down below if that's true the implicit support that the markets and ratings agencies had relied upon for years to justify their pricing and low capital charges turned out to be correct Fannie and Freddie actually were an obligation of the U.S. government, and the government made good on it, so they could just do what they could do, you know? We could just do what we could do. So then they continue. That was, that was just kind of, kind of setting you up here. As Americans, we will need to have more faith in the willingness and the ability of our government to print money as the ultimate solution to every problem. I, I, now, I, I read this article, and I kind of believe that this this individual who wrote this article, I can't, I don't know, the, I, I didn't, I don't know the name. There's a link to the article, though, in here, so you can go there yourself and find out. Anyway, this particular individual, I think that they're writing this sarcastically. That's my take. But uh, at the same hand, they're still kind of saying, listen, man, this is kind of, my impl my under, it's kind of like he's revealing and I believe it was a man, pretty sure it was a man's name, or if I remember right. He reve he's revealed, he basically is saying this, 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 this horrible thing that's really horrible, it's true. It's true, we just got to live with it, and here's what that means, here's what you can do with it. It's kind of like that. This is, this is just what it is. That's kind of what I decided. That's why I changed my mind regarding a lot of things. I'm like, listen, they can just print money. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to call in any workers on these people. Not until a carrier goes down. 
carrier goes down, then all bets are off. But until then, nobody's going to be calling these people in. So, hey, let's just print, instead of $6 trillion to do this crap we just did, let's print $6 trillion and give it to the doers in the, in the poorest of communities, the people doing crap. And I mean the entrepreneurs, the, the public servants, all, and I don't mean no government people. I mean people just doing stuff. Give it to the people that are competent and doing stuff that communities already look at and say, yeah, man, that dude, that gal, that day, whatever these people are, they're doing good. All right, give them the money. Just give it to them. No strings attached. Well, the only strings attached are that you actually have to do what you say you're going to do with it. But other than that, no strings attached. And you get to tell us in advance, and we give it basically to the doers. We, the people, the American people as a whole, we, we just we are going to print all this money and do whatever you got to do to make it. You know, Make it the loans that zero out if you do such and such. It'll be worth it. The government will be collecting tax revenues from prosperous communities. Instead of ghettos, we will have tons and tons of, of fantastic, new, diverse wealthy communities of of uh, very very different uh compositions and and variations that will destroy what remnant of racism exists when we see people successful doing awesome things and we already see it in america there's already plenty of this now but this would just knock it out of the park this would finally destroy racism none of this sjw crap will do it no just just flood those communities with because because that's because that's kind of the conclusion that I've come to, and if that's true, let's just do it before it crashes. Let's just get this crap in before this whole thing crashes. Like if I as one thing I could do in my life, well, there's two things that I would like to do in government. The first thing, fundamentally, end the IPs, end the IPs other than your identities. Like I say in my show now, I have a thing: steal my stuff. If you can make money off of it, great. The only thing you have to do is credit me, Frico, and Frico.com. You do that. Just do it. Don't, don't take credit for my work. But if you if you want to repost my stuff, republish it, mirror it, and you have a channel and you can make money, go ahead. Free, free. And the other thing would be flood the zones, especially our ghettos. First and foremost, our inner city ghettos. Let's just destroy the the conditions that allow for those things to happen and and we can help people in the here and now that are in those situations for the rest of their lives live so much more stable meaningful lives of prosperity than than they have right now and it would be incredibly beneficial to everyone if you want to see less tyranny get those communities out of those conditions and they'll no longer be the hotbeds for all of this this tumultuous revolt that they are today and and they are that way because you deserve it we deserve it we deserve the the tumult for our 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 continued lack of recognizing just how moronic it is to allow these conditions to exist when we have the capacity to wipe these conditions out and have would you rather have a black community that's dealing with gun shootings or a black community that's dealing with a friction between the the old poets of the last decade and the new poets of this decade. I'd like that to be what they're dealing with. That's what I'd like. I, people just feeling like this is life or death stuff over schools of poetry. I'd rather see that. And and we can have that. And if we have that, America is is... If America can take its foot off of the necks of, of the people that have the foot on them, if they can do that, if we can do that, then then we'll be the we will we will we will flourish once again. And we will flourish in ways in which we don't have to rape the lands around us. We can be largely self sustaining. We don't need to rape the world. We got plenty of stuff right here. We can leave people alone. I don't want to isolate, but I don't want to rape. Let's stop the rapings. The uh, rapings, the American rapings, should should probably stop in current year, because we have the technology. We we can we can build a better America, one that's centered around the Bill of Rights first and foremost. And maybe eventually, y'all will realize we never really even needed that. But right now, I think that's asking too much. So I go with that Bill of Rights. Quantuming from a distance, thanks to lasers. Oh, let me let me get rid of you. You've 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 been there enough. 
Excerpt from ScienceDaily.com. Laser loop couples quantum systems over a distance. For the first time, researchers have succeeded in creating a strong coupling between quantum systems over a great distance. They accomplish this with a novel method in which a laser loop connects the systems, enabling nearly lossless exchange of information and strong interaction between them. The physicists reported that the new method opens up new possibilities in quantum networks and quantum sensor technology. A team of physicists led by Professor Philip Tretlion from the Department of Physics at the University of Basel and the Swiss Nanosciences Institute has now succeeded for the first time in creating strong coupling between two systems over a great distance across a room temperature environment. In their experiment, the researchers used a laser light to couple the vibrations of a 100 nanometer thin membrane to the motion of the spin of atoms over a distance of one meter. As a result, each vibration of the membrane sets the spin of the atoms in motion and vice versa. Now, I can follow that, but repeating it to you would be a challenge. So I'm not going to try, and hopefully you've got that. But uh, that is... Now, I don't know why, though, all of this has... Uh, th when they say as a result, not sure how the as a result got there. But I, I generally, okay. So a loop of light acts as a mechanical spring. The experiment is based on a concept that the research developed together with a theoretical physicist, Professor Clemens Hammerer. Ooh, I didn't ask you, add you as a... Oh, never mind. From the University of Hanover. It involves sending a beam of laser light back and forth between the systems. The light then behaves like a mechanical spring. I love this. This is one of these things I could easily have picked for a news poem too, by the way. That's a that's a path poetry right there. The light then behaves like a mechanical spring stretched. Now see that's really it's the arrangement. Really, I would say I would probably say just light behaves like a mechanical spring. Light behaves like a mechanical spring. I wouldn't want the and I wouldn't want then. I would light behaves like a mechanical spring. That's what you do right there. And then you're probably going to take this and put this somewhere else, but that would be a phrase that I would use. Sometimes I like doing with the news poems. I, I cut up the phrases, but this one is loaded with a number of, of cuttable phrases that then you write around. I like doing that in general. I don't do it every time. I think I do it like maybe one in four or five times, but, but I do it with some degree of regularity. This one is just ideal. I should have picked this one for the news poem. I feel kind of stupid now. The light then behaves like a mechanical spring stretched between the atoms and the membrane and transmits force between the two, explains Dr. Thomas Kark. Oh, it, now it's another person speaking. Who carried out the experiments. Okay, big person to be talking. Very, very important. As part of his doctoral thesis at the... Oh, he's just doing a doctoral thesis, so he's an amateur. He's a rookie. I'm just kidding. All right. All right, and, and never mind. In this laser loop, the properties of the light can be trans controlled so that no information about the motion of the two systems is lost to the environment, thus ensuring that the quantum mechanical interaction is not disturbed. Yeah, just, just. Those phrases, you cut so many of these phrases up, you spread them out, and then you you, you let it flow, and then you write, write the in-betweens. And that's, that's uh, if you're listening to this, and you want to try to write a news poem in the strictest sense of the term, that would be it. So if you write one, send it in. And if I really, really like it, I'll laugh at I'll, I'll laugh that you sent something to me. No, I'll read it. I'll probably read it on the air and give you credit and we'll have a beautiful moment. Officials suffer from the burden of enforcing tyranny. This is from the New York Times. For those who must enforce coronavirus lockdowns in California, decisions are wrenched. Now, I could, just, I could just get a little tiny bit of a blurb thing for this. And I just wanted to make a note of this, that somebody's actually writing this article in the New York Times. Officials suffer from the burden of enforcing tyranny. And then their little subtitle here. For those who must enforce coronavirus lockdowns in California. Oh, no, that's just my title. See, my title is actually... I was like wondering, it's like, wow, they're being honest. And I'm like, oh, that's why I wrote that. That's my headline. Officials suffer from the burden of enforcing tyranny. For those, this is their headline. For those who must enforce coronavirus lockdowns in California, the decisions are wrenching. How do you enforce a law that tramples the land of the free? Especially when you have an expert and you are an expert and you have experts, experts, experts. You get the drift. 
Angela Alvarado, a veteran prosecutor in the Santa Clara District Attorney's Office in California, has to weigh safety, freedom, and the law as she fields complaints about stay-at-home violations. Angela Avila, a worker from her kitchen table in Los Altos, California, a prosecutor with the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office. Ms. Alvarado is part of a team tasked with monitoring and responding to thousands of shelter-in-place violation combinations. Can't even read this article. It's behind it. A big, big, nasty paywall. I hate paywalls for for news. By the way, I could speak on that, but I won't. And uh, with that, we end our headlines you may have missed. And this is just it. We're just gonna do this. We're just going to not even. Are we gonna? Yeah, we're gonna go. We'll, we'll do this. All right. Yeah. All right. That's it. So, if you like what you see, be sure to sponsor me. Go to uh, freecode.com slash tip and uh, tips and and uh, send me money. Just send me your money. You know why you send me your money? Why not? Feel good about yourself. Feel like I'm sponsoring Freeco. And it's not even a monthly thing. It's just send me your money. So it's that kind of sponsorship. And then, you know, no must, no fuss. You won't get any kind of monthly little thing. You won't have to write a, a letter to your, to your, to your, to your, your poor bedraggled, uh, Freako that you're supporting out there in the tundra, in the metaphorical tundra, so to speak. You know, you just you just send me money, and that's where we're going to end this. The uh, next segment is going to be the feature segment, and the story for the feature is going to be what is it here? Here we go. Let's get her up there. European Union faces budget dissolution. Warns Brussels. <laughs> 